Hello? I love you. The year is 2002, and life is freaking sick right now. Skateboarding is cool enough that it'll actually get you laid. Odd pods are out and like are like the coolest thing ever. Twitter just doesn't exist yet. Everything that's coming out is, is new and exciting because we're not miserable, jaded, late 20-year-old somethings. But that's not even the best part of it. A little company called Nintendo actually had a functioning ball sack to make one of the greatest, most ballsy games of the entire decade called... Oh, wait, wait, you're talking about Zelda, right? No, I'm, I'm not... Well, I mean, that's a... Yeah, it's a great game. Oh, no, Mario Kart. The Mario Sunshine, Mario Sunshine. No. Not even close. I'm, I'm talking about Metroid Prime. I, I never heard of it. What is that? You're telling me you've never heard of Metroid Prime. Who's Prime? Who's the Metroid? <laughs> well, you're gonna learn today. Say today that I accept this plea because my conduct is wrong. New studio, by the way! Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been uh, a few minutes. I've been kind of busy with uh, touring, festivals, and some other cool stuff um, amidst coke and all this other- Oh, I can't say coke. <laughs> Uh, can you picture your favorite song or a handful of songs that you could easily listen to on repeat for like a couple weeks? Well, the truth of the matter is there's at least tens of thousands of those songs out there that are your favorite songs ever and you will never know because you'll just never find them in your lifetime. It's strange to think that your favorite game could be something you haven't played yet. You see where I'm going with this? I don't get it. But for most people, that's exactly the case for Metroid Prime. It's one of the greatest, most beloved franchises that just not many people have heard of. And I know what you're thinking. How is it that a game that's about a chick fighting off space cum from a console that was named after a shape possibly hang out with games made like 20 years later? It is, to this day, still one of the greatest games that's ever been released from Nintendo, if not one of the greatest trilogies that's ever been made in gaming. This game perfectly captured and understood one of the most important elements that games these days still try so hard to copy and fall flat on. Metroid strategically uses its gameplay, storytelling, level design, world building to give you the purest sense of adventure. So many games these days try way too hard to be these cinematic experiences that end up just feeling hollow and repetitive. I swear to fucking God, if I have to watch another cutscene that looks like this. All right, yeah! Once there was an explosion. A bang which gave birth to time. I'm gonna lose my shit. Now, of course, you've heard the old adage, show, don't tell. But I think there's one that's a step further that Metroid Prime accomplished, and that is experience, don't show. Because see, the more you try to get the player involved in your story by pushing exposition in their face, the more it takes you out of the game because you're watching things happen in front of you instead of just experiencing them from a gameplay perspective. You see this game right here? Ugh, this game is getting raw, you know what I'm saying? The graphics look way better. They even have real actors. But nobody talks like this. N nobody drinks that Flavor of monster. That's like the worst one out of all like the god at least put the blue ones in forced to exposition like this in video games Don't pull you into the game. They push you out of the experience Then Metroid does the opposite by doing none of those things to achieve that same amount of adventure and epicness in a story And hey guys, I know you're sick and tired of hearing it, but if you could please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon, I make sure that every single video is the best quality I can make it. So you can rest assured that your subscription feed is going to be only my best work. So thank you guys. I really do appreciate it. On to the video. See, the story in Metroid Prime starts off with you receiving a distress signal. You follow that to a space pirate vessel that has a bunch of dead space pirates in it because they got killed by something they made. You find the thing they made, you kill it, the thing blows up. But of course, Samus wasn't wearing her like space seat belt, so she got knocked around the explosion and lost all of her upgrades because that's just how Metroid works at this point. The space station collapses onto a planet called Talon 420, and then you have to go follow the thing down to see what the fuck's going on. And it turns out that all the people living on the planet are dead because space comm invaded the planet. And it turns out that same substance is spreading out through the galaxy, infecting other planets. And the space pirates want to use a space crack to make their weapons stronger and to, and to infuse it with Metroids and a bunch of other stuff that I won't spoil yet because it's pretty fun to know about. And the beauty part is the game tells you 
None of that. It's all figured out through just observing the world around you. All of the wow factor incitement comes purely from player discovery, which makes it feel so much more organic than just having cutscenes and exposition thrown down your throat. Metroid Prime is not afraid to just turn you loose and say, have fun, hope you figure out the story, but you could easily miss it. Up to you! Take for example Skyrim. You walk into the city and then there's a beheading going on on your right. It's a crucial part in the plot that you could just completely skip. As if it was just another thing happening on your right. Cause it was! And if the game had just decided to lock you into a little 21 by 9 cutscene and just zoom the camera in on what's ever going on, it would totally ruin the immersion. But instead, the game knows that you'll just be curious about what's going on over here and you can just walk up and see what's happening. That's so much more natural than me just being forced to watch a cutscene. Any cutscene in Metroid is used for a purely just aesthetical purposes. And the rest of the plot is told through optional scanning or just by looking at your environment. Or, well, at least every cutscene except for this one. That's technically tell, don't show, cause you're reading little things that you're scanning. <laughs> Suck my fucking dick, dude. But not really. See, instead of just straight scanning things to get a Wikipedia article-like pop-up, you will often instead read short blurbs through the perspective of the people before you. Maybe you were reading the last will and testament of a dying moth creature that was trying so hard to protect something with its life. Or maybe you're reading the science logs of space pirates who tried to mimic your morph ball function and ended up breaking their bones. That type of world building means you're someone in a world that's existed before their involvement. It's these discoveries that make you feel like you're sucked into the world, which makes you just a small entity inside of a giant world that exists outside of your own influence. See, the beauty part of Metroid Prime is that it's a first-person adventure game where you get to just explore things and you just happen to have a gun as a, as a thing. The gun is just as much of a tool to get to new areas as it is a weapon. See, the issue with Metroid Prime is that it features a lot of heavy tones and themes, and that's just something Nintendo is not really capable of doing now. It's, it's above PG. You can't just have dying soldiers and entire planets exploding and mass genocide of species coming from Nintendo. So now it's sitting in this no man's land of the people who enjoy the franchise freaking love it because it's great, but now Nintendo doesn't really have the guts to really follow up on what is such an amazing series that they've created for themselves. I'm hoping that Metroid Prime 4 brings back everything that the older games had. I understand the storyline will have to be something different, but I don't really give a shit because as long as they do what they did 20 years ago, it'll kick a major ass. I couldn't be more excited to see what's next for the franchise. Thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. I will catch you guys on the next one. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You're talking about, you're talking about Zelda, right?